Hey, you guys. Am I on? How are you? It's so hot today. <clears throat> I have the I have my AC in the other room running. I hope you guys can't hear it. Hey, guys. Hi, chat. Hi, Lush. How's it going? Welcome back. Nikki. Welcome back. Hey, QP. I saw I've seen you a couple of times. Irene. Hi, Irene. How's it going? Benji Builder. What's up, Benji Builder? Hannah. Hi, Hannah. How's it going? Glad you could join. <clears throat> Lady Maya. What's up? Katie. Hey, Katie. Raining days. What's up? Lost says, no, I can't hear the AC. Good. George. How's it going, George? John. Oh, today, today was not a good day. Okay, so I, I woke up um, and then I walked into, I walked into my kitchen and I saw a couple of ants, like two or three ants. And I was like, uh-oh, what the hell's going on? And I started looking at, the, at my floor and there were, a, like, you start seeing ants, right? They're like ants in a couple of places and I started looking around like what is going on and I have this uh closet right next to my front door okay and I saw a couple of ants underneath uh the door to that closet and I opened it up and there was a bunch of ants in the corner I don't know what they were doing okay mostly small ants but there were like big ants there were like almost one centimeter ants uh in the mix so i was like oh my god what is going on it's so weird because there's like it's a uh, it's a closet where i keep my like shipping items so there's no food or anything there and i make sure to keep my place clean so there's no food anywhere right um i'm starving no there's no f i don't know what they're doing in there there's a bunch of ants so i um i took my uh so I took out my my uh, what do you call it? my vacuum and I started I started vacuuming the ants right, and I vacuumed them all, and you know when you vacuum ants you can't just leave it there right because they're still alive inside the inside the bags, um, so you gotta really throw that shit in in the uh, in the in the garbage outside, so so my my vacuum is that it's not a bag vacuum it's one of those things that have a plastic holder uh, tank that you just take out so I took it out. And I dumped it in uh, the trash, and then you know how you, you know how you like you kind of bang, you kind of bang your your tank, uh, your garbage tank on on the on the garbage bin to make sure everything is out. And I ba I banged it too hard, and uh, there was a latch that fell off. It's the latch that kept kept the thing closed, so it falls off into the garbage, into the garbage can. Okay, and I was like, no. So there was stuff in the garbage can, okay? So I had to, uh, I had to take the, I had to put it down sideways, the garbage can, and, and dig inside for this little latch. And it took literally 45 minutes. And at first I thought, oh, I can just find it, right? No, 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 no. You can't find it. You can't find it. It's, it's the, this little, like, it's this little thing. So, yeah, so I got uh, some gloves. And I just went in there. I just dug in there. And finally, after 45 minutes, I found that stupid thing. And then I washed it and everything's good. Yeah. And it was like 90 something degrees outside today. So I was super sweating. It was it sucked. Now I got to find out how to get rid of these ants. Um, I've had ant problems before, like not in this place, but in other places that I've lived. And uh, what really works is those, um, I don't, I forgot what they're called, but they're these little things uh, where it, uh, it comes in like a syrup form, a little droplet form where you just put droplets onto the freaking, this little piece of paper and you put it on the ground and they'll eat it. And um, hopefully they, hopefully it works. <clears throat> Hi, 
Oh, Tosero. Hey, thanks for the super chat. That's awesome. Yeah, ants suck. Hey, Amanda, how's it going? I don't know what the ants are eating. There are no food. There's no food in there. There's no food in that closet. It's so weird. Yeah, Titus. No, the ants are not in my kitchen. They, that I for now they've mostly been staying inside that closet. I think they're coming from outside. I'm not sure, like outside the front door. Nikki says ant stalker press charges. Eh. But luckily, yeah, luckily I found the latch. I didn't have to order it. Hey, Amy, how's it going? So Amy is the, MV uh, is the MVP for today because guess what she got me? Oh, no, I forgot. Hold on one second. So, she bought me this. You guys see? It's honeydew powder for boba. Yeah. And also this. Cookies and cream. I haven't tried this yet. And then, just, you know, boba. Yes, Nikki. Amy has the uh, MVP award, the most valuable boba award. So I made it. I made it just before the stream. Uh, I haven't tasted it yet, so we'll see. I kind of taste. I kind of taste tested it, so I know I knew how much um, powder to put. But I, I'm not. I haven't tasted the final product yet. So we're gonna do it live. Uh, if you don't know how to make boba. You just have these tapioca balls. You just put it in boiling water for like five minutes. And then uh, that's it. And then uh, I, I brewed some tea. I have pandan leaf tea. If you don't know what pandan leaf tea is, you should. You should try it out. It's really good. I brewed some tea. Uh, so I mixed tea with almond milk and then some of that, uh, some of that uh, powder. The winter melon powder. Or sorry, the honeydew powder. And then you just put the balls in. Balls are amazing. So here it is. It looks legit. So let's see how it tastes. Uh, lovable Lily Pup says, uh, I don't know what boba is. Boba is these little balls. Yeah. I don't have a I don't have a straw at the moment, so we're gonna have to use a spoon. Let's see how it tastes. Disgusting. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's pretty good. Honeydew powder is pretty good. Let's see the boba. Mmm. Oh. I fucked up. So, this boba says it's black sugar flavor, but I think there's no sugar there's no sugar in it. I should have dipped it in sugar or syrup or something. So it's unsweetened boba. My bad. You hint Tom. Ah, you can't steal my boba. <clears throat> uh, Amanda Wong says, what flavor? It's honeydew flavor with pandan tea, pandan leaf tea. <clears throat> Thanks, Amy. Thanks so much. So, lesson learned for next time. Uh, 
dip the boba in water uh, in syrup or some sugar and then I think put more uh, powder I think it's a little less sweet all right there you go thanks Amy Katie says, Lynn, you make boba with brown sugar water? I don't know. So I've, I've done it before. I made it with, um, I've just uh, boiled the tapioca and then uh, leave it dipped or leave it soaked in sugar water. Hope Johnson says, what tea? It's pandan leaf tea. You guys want to see? Switch the screen here. It's really good. If you haven't tried it, it has this <clears throat> has this smell. <clears throat> it has this aroma that smells really good. It is pandan leaf tea. It's on Amazon. Top Usi, you want to drink that so bad? Too bad. It's mine. <laughs> Lash says, what about Boba with the shot? Oh, I forgot. What do you guys think? Does... Hmm. Can we uh, put a shot of tequila in this? I don't think so, though. Ah. <clears throat> Next time. Next time I'll make um like a lemonade herbal tea. And then I think tequila will go well with that. Let's try that. Espresso and a tablespoon of spirit. Hmm. Aka Shodan says, do it for science. All right. Fine, chat. Uh, we'll do it at the end. We'll put a... Rem remind me, okay? You guys remind me. We'll do it at the end. Uh, we just put... I just put a, a shot of tequila in this. For no reason. All right. I think we can get started. Okay. So, what happened last time? Last time, um, remember, Yilin was still in that, uh, in that guy's residence, uh, Liu, Ch Liu Chengfeng. And she was telling the story of, you know, how she escaped. From uh, that rapist, um, what's his name? Tian Bo Guang. So, Lin Hu Chong wins his fighting. Remember, they were having, they had a bet where um, they had to fight while sitting down, and whoever stands up first loses. And Lin Hu Chong wins. Okay, Lin Hu Chong is the eldest brother of the um, Hua Shang Sword School. So Lin Hu Chong wins uh, the seat fight. And turns out, Tian Bo Guang, the sexual assaulter, is an honorable dude, and he he honors the bet, and then he just leaves. Okay, so he loses, accepts his loss, and he leaves, which is good. Um, and then what happens is we get some Chin Chung students. They're attacked. Okay, they're attacked, and uh, there's like a bunch of the Chin Chung students are thrown inside the chambers where where everyone was in and was talking. And they're they're paralyzed. Okay, they're they're paralyzed because um, their their acupuncture points have been sealed. And it turn, uh, looks like someone really powerful did that, but no, they don't know who it, who it is. Okay, so Yu Changhai, um, the the teacher or the master of the Chincheng Sword School, saw his sees his students being attacked. Um, 
and he goes out into the larger chamber, the large hall where all the people are, and he tries to look for anyone who looks suspicious. And he finds this one hunchback guy that looks really suspicious, that stands out. Um, and uh, apparently, the moment anyone, the moment everyone sees this hunchback, they immediately uh, they immediately think that he's this guy named Mu Gao Feng. Okay, he's called the Hunchback of the North. All right, so apparently he's a famous dude and um, he's really strong. So everyone thinks that's him because that's the only like strong hunchback guy, right? And uh, but what we what they don't know is that it's not really Mu Gao Feng. It's Lin Lin Ping Chi. Okay, the guy who in the beginning his parents were attacked. Um. Uh, but then after a while, okay, after a while, at first everyone thought that it's Mu Gao Feng, but they later realize, oh no, it's Lin Ping. It, well, it's not Lin Ping. They don't know it's Lin Ping Zhi because they don't know who he is, but they know it's not Mu Gao Feng. But then for some reason, uh, a freak coincidence, the real Mu Gao Feng, the real hunchback of the North, comes over. And he pretends to be the grandfather of this smaller hunchback, Lin Ping Zhi. And he defends him, okay? And then he begins, they start to, they start to fight, okay? They, they haven't fought yet, but they start to fight. Um, Yu Sang Hai and Mu Gao Feng. Um, they begin a fight, but then this little girl, out of nowhere, in the audience, just interrupts everything. And then she starts making fun of Yu Sang Hai. Saying he's not a hero and would a hero do this or that. And the problem is, this little girl seems really smart and she's saying really smart things, but since she's a little girl, Yu Sang Hai can't do anything about it. Okay, he's an older dude, he's an older gentleman, and he can't uh, attack a little girl. So that's what happens. Uh, he gets embarrassed, okay? And then uh, I think at the end, at the end, um, Yilin wakes up and then she takes the little girl outside. And that's where we ended. All right. How's that? We march till the Wi-Fi cuts out. <clears throat> All right, guys. I think we can get started. And I remember this time. Angel says Linfamy's video is 50% Japanese history and 50% making fun of our, of our love lives. What love life? Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> Chapter 5, Healing, Part 1. Yilin followed the girl outside. What's your name? She asked. The girl gave a sly grin. My last name is Linghu. And my first name is Chong. Yilin's heart thumped. I asked you politely, why are you making fun of me? She pulled a long face. What makes you think I'm making fun of you? The girl kept grinning. This is the little girl, okay? So Yilin takes her outside and they're talking. The girl kept grinning. Do you think your friend is the only one who is called Ling Linghu Chong? Yilin felt deep sorrow in her heart. She sighed and could no longer hold her tears back. Big brother Linghu was my savior, she said. His death was my fault. I, I am not worthy to be his friend. Just then, in the hallway outside, two hunchbacks hurried by. Yilin recognized them as the hunchback of the North, Mu Gaofeng, and Lin Pingzhi, the girl. The girl giggled. What odds? An old, ugly hunchback together with a young, ugly hunchback? Yilin was a bit annoyed at the girl's remarks. Girl, she asked, is it possible for you to find your mother and father by yourself? My head is beginning to hurt, and I'm not feeling very well right now. The girl grinned. I know you're faking a headache. You're just mad because I use Ling Hu Chong's name. 
my dear sis, your master asked you to take care of me. Why are you abandoning me? Why are you abandoning me already? If some rascals pick on me again, your master is going to blame you for sure. You are much more capable than I am, and you're very smart too. Even the renowned Master Yu didn't know what to do with you. People are all thanking Buddha that you were. You aren't the one picking on others. How? Who would dare bully you? Yilin countered. The girl burst into laughter. She held Yilin's hand and said, Now you're the one making fun of me. If it weren't for your master, that bull nose would have beaten me up. Sis, my name is Chu Feiyan. My grandfather calls me Fei Fei. You can call, you can call me Fei Fei too. Yilin felt a little better when the girl said her real name, but she, could, but she also thought it was strange that the girl knew she was still thinking about Ling Hu Chong and used his name to startle her. Maybe the clever and eccentric girl had hidden outside the window and overheard her reports to all the masters. Well, she said, Miss Chu, let's go find your mother and father then. Where do you think they might be? Titus says, I hope you don't die from poisoning. Why would I die from poisoning? <clears throat> Anna call, calls your cat Feifei. You do? You actually call your cat Feifei or is that just a joke? <clears throat> Yilin felt a little better when the girl... Wait, wait. I know where they went, Chu Feiyan said. If you want to look for them, you can go by yourself. I'm not going. Why don't you want to go? Yilin asked in surprise. I'm still too young. Of course I don't want to go. But you're different. You're so gloomy and depressed right now. Maybe you'd prefer to go there early, Chu Feiyan said. Yilin's heart thumped. You mean your mother and father? My parents were murdered by bad guys a long time ago. If you want to look for them, you'll have to go to the underworld. Yilin was very vexed. If your parents have passed away already, how can you still make fun of them? I am leaving. Chu Feiyan grabbed into, onto Yilin's left hand and started to beg. My dear sis, I don't have anyone else. I'm always so lonely. Nobody plays with me. Please, please just stay a little longer. Yilin was moved by her words. Well, all right, she sighed. I'll stay with you a little longer, but you have to stop saying such nonsense. Also, I am, I am a member of the Buddhist order, so it isn't appropriate for you to call me sis. Chu Feiyan laughed. You think I was just saying silly words, but I think they make perfect sense. Different people have different perspectives. You are older than me, so I call you sis. What's wrong with that? Sis Yilin, why don't you quit being a nun? Yilin was startled and stepped back. Chu Feiyan let go of her hand. What's so great about being a nun? she asked. You can't eat fish, shrimp, chicken, or duck, not to mention beef or lamb. Sis, you're really very pretty. Why don't you look... You don't look good... Yeah. You don't look so good right now because you shaved your head. Once you grow a nice long head of beautiful black hair, you'll be a real babe. Remember, Yilin is a nun, okay? So, she has no hair. Yilin could tell that Chu Feiyan was speaking from her heart, so she smiled. I am already a member of the Buddhist clergy. We believe in the doctrine of the four emptiness. Why would I care whether my outer husk is beautiful or ugly? Chu Feiyan turned her head toward Yilin and looked at Yilin's face carefully. It had just stopped raining and dark clouds started drifting away slowly. Moonlight streamed through the opening at an angle and illuminated Yilin's face with a pale silver glow, which made her face even more beautiful. Chu Feiyan gave a sigh. Sis, you are so beautiful, she said slowly. No wonder he thinks about you so much. Yilin's face became flushed. What are you talking about? She exclaimed uncomfortably. If you keep making fun of me, I am going to leave. Fine, I'll stop, Chu Feiyan said with a smile. Sis, can you give me some heavenly connecting glue? I need to save someone. Who are you saving? Yilin asked in surprise. Nikki says, this Chu Feiyan is cracking me up. Yeah, she's a spunky little girl. <clears throat> He's a very important person. 
but I can't tell you who he is yet, Xu Feiyan grinned. I really should give you the medicine if you need it to save somebody's life, Yilin said, but my master told us that the making of the heavenly connecting glue is not easy, and we have been ordered to use it to... We have been ordered not to use it if the wounded person is unworthy. Sis, Xu Feiyan said, if somebody cursed your master and your Hangshan sword school, would he be worthy or unworthy? If he cursed my master and our Hangshan sword school, of course he would be unworthy. How could he be any good? That's really very interesting, Xu Feiyan mused slyly. There's this guy who once said again and again that he would have really bad luck after seeing nuns and would lose all his bets. He abused you, your master, and the entire Hangshan sword school. If such an unworthy fellow got wounded... Before she even finished, Yilin had already turned around and strode away angrily. Xu Feiyan jumped in front of her, arms outstretched and blocking Yilin's way. She kept smiling but had no intention to let Yilin pass. It suddenly struck Yilin. Yesterday at the Huayan wine house, the girl sat with a man through the entire incident until Big Brother Ling Hu was murdered. When I carried his body down the stairs, she was still sitting there. She must have seen the whole thing. There's no need for her to eavesdrop on what I said at all. Could she have followed me all the way? She, a she wanted to ask the girl an important question, but could not make herself speak the words. Yilin could only blush with embarrassment. Sis, I know you want to ask me, where did Big Brother Ling Hu's body go? Am I right? Xu Feiyan grinned. Yes. Would you please tell me? I, I would really appreciate it, Yilin pleaded. I don't, I don't know, but there's someone who does. However, he's bi badly wounded and could die at any minute now. If you, say, if you can save him using the heavenly connecting glue, he might be able to tell you where Big Brother Ling Hu's body is. You don't know yourself? Yilin asked. If I, Chu Feiyan, know where Ling Hu Chang's dead body is, may heaven let me die by Yu Chang Hai's sword tomorrow and die a terrible death. I believe you. you. You don't have to vow, Yilin said hurriedly. So, who is this person? It's up to you if you want to save his life or not. And the place we're going to isn't such a good place, either. In order to find Ling Hu Chang's body, even a hill of knives or a forest of swords could not stop Yilin from going, much less something like not a good place. Yilin nodded. Let's go. They marched toward the gate. Hmm, this nun is uh, acting a bit thirsty, isn't she? <clears throat> Man, you guys are still talking about the boba tea in chat. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I should not spill this because the friggin' ants are gonna get me. I don't know what's going on in charge. Uh, charge. I don't know what's going on in chat. Is there a march? Are we, mar are we marching somewhere? Are we marching to my house? Don't do that. Yeah, I know. Yilin is totally crushing. Linfamy, we hereby declare war on your table. Come get me, motherfucker. Come on. Come at me, bro. Let's do this. Mm. Baytuber. Yeah, this is live. I don't know why. <clears throat> Wish Yokai is my favorite. Uh, Kitsune, I believe. It's, it's a mix, uh, well, I don't know. It's one or two. Uh, it's either Kitsune or, or Tanuki. It's my favorite. Tanuki has big balls. Uh, you can't, it's hard to beat the big balls. It was still raining outside. Some oil paper umbrellas leaned by the side of the gate, 
Yilin and Chu Feiyan each took one and walked out of the gate toward the northeast corner of the city. It was already late at night and there was hardly anybody in the street. When they walked by, a couple of dogs in the deep alleys barked. All Yilin could think of was where to find Ling Huchang's body. So even though Chu Feiyan walked through many remote little streets, she did not care. After they walked for quite a while, Chu Feiyan entered a very narrow alley. A small red lantern stuck out from a door at the left side of the street. Chu Feiyan knocked on the door three times. Someone approached from the courtyard within, opened the door, and stuck his head out. Chu Feiyan whispered something in the man's ear and stuck something into his hands. Sure, sure, come in please, missus, the man said. Chu Feiyan turned back and motioned Yilin, who followed her through the doorway. The man had a surprised look on his face upon seeing Yilin, but still hurried ahead to lead the way. After they walked through the courtyard, they arrived at a room in the east of the building. The man parted the door curtain. Miss, sister, through here, please, he said. The scent of perfume filled the entire room. Yulin walked in and saw a huge bed in the room. Exotic silk quilts and pillows covered the bed. They were decorated with Chiang Xiang embroidery one of the greatest arts of its type in the world. A pair of loving birds playing in the water was embroidered on the cover of the red silk quilt. It was made with very bright colors, and the ducks almost seemed alive. Yilin had been cloistered in the white cloud nunnery since she was very little. The quilt she used was a very simple quilt made with gray cloth. She had never seen such a gorgeous bed set in her entire life. She gave a quick glance and immediately turned her head away. A big red candle sat on the small table next to the bed. A mirror and a makeup box sat neatly by the red candle. Two pairs of exotic slippers laid on the floor side by side near the bed. A pair for a man and a pair for a woman. Yilin felt a sudden shock when she raised her head and saw a shy face, both red with embarrassment and registering surprise. Then she realized that it was only her own face reflected from the mirror. The sound of footsteps came from behind them. What appeared to be a maid walked in with a big smile and started serving tea. She wore very tight clothes and her manner was quite coquettish. Co coquettish? Yilin felt more and more uneasiness. What is this place? She whispered to Yu Feiyan. Chu Feiyan. Uh, what is... What's going on? Where, where is she? Chu Feiyan grinned and then whispered something to the maid. Sure, the woman covered up the smile on her lips with her hand and walked out, slowly. That woman is bumbling. She can't be very honest, Yilin thought to herself. Why did you bring me here? What is this place? She asked Chu Feiyan again. This is a very famous spot in the town of Hangshan. It's called the Jade House, Chu Feiyan said with a broad grin. What is this Jade House? The Jade House is the best brothel in town. Bah! She just brought a nun to a brothel. When Yilin heard the word brothel, her heart skipped a beat, and she almost fainted. When she saw the way the room was decorated, she, she already had the feeling that something was not right, but she did not expect to be in a brothel at all. Although she did not really understand what a brothel was, she had heard from the secular, secular apprentice sisters that prostitutes were the most lewd of women. They would consort with any man who had enough money. Did Chu Feiyan bring me here to be one of them? She was so shocked and worried that she almost burst into tears. A man's loud laughter exploded from the room next door. The, the voice sounded very familiar, and before long, Yulin had recognized it as the voice of the villain, 10,000 miles loner, Tian Bo Guang. Like, <laughs> she can't escape this guy. I think she ran into this guy like three times already. Yulin's legs gave out on her. She collapsed into a chair. Her face, Frightened and pale. What's wrong? Chu Feiyan was startled and rushed over to check on her. It's... it's Tian... Tian Bo Kuang, Yilin whispered. That's right, I recognize his voice too. It's your cute little apprentice, Tian Bo Kuang, Chu Feiyan grinned. Who's saying my name? Tian Bo Kuang shouted loudly from the next room. Hey, Tian Bo Kuang, Chu Feiyan yelled. Your master is here. Come here quickly and kowtow to your master. Tian Bo Guang became enraged. What master, you little bitch? You're just babbling. Keep at it, and I'm going to bust open your stinking mouth.
a brothel. Wait, you guys don't know what a brothel is? Or some of you? It's a place where prostitutes are. <laughs> People get their prostitution on in there. No, don't look it up on a map. What? Guys. <clears throat> uh, I've never watched JoJo, so I, I don't know what you're talking about. L Lunmation. <clears throat> Wasn't it true that you swore to take little sister Yilin of the Hangshan Sword School as your master at the Huayan Wine House? She is right here. Hurry up and get on over, Xu Feiyan urged. How can, she pe how can she possibly be in a place like this? Tian Bo Guang exclaimed. Huh, how? How did you know? Who are you? I am going to kill you. A trace of fear could actually be heard in his blustering voice. Come here and kowtow to your master first, Chu Fei Yan said airily. No, no, don't let him come over, Yilin hurriedly objected. Tian Bo Guang let out a cry in shock and then came a loud thump as he apparently jumped to the floor from his bed. Sir, what are you doing? A woman's voice inquired. Tian Bo Guang, Yu Chu Feiyan shouted. Don't you run away. Your master is here to settle a score with you. What damn master or apprentice? Tian Bo Guang retorted. I was tricked by that Ling Hu Chong. If that little nun comes one step closer, I'll kill her in a blink. Fine. I am not... Wait. Fine, I am not coming over. And you don't come, come here either, Yilin said with her trembling voice. Tian Bo Guang, Chu Feiyan yelled. You're supposed to be a somebody in the martial world. Why don't you be a man? Are you backing out of your promises? Come over here and kowtow to your master. Tian Bo Guang snorted, but did not say another word. I don't want him to kowtow. I don't want to see him either. He, he is not my apprentice, Yilin said. Tian Bo Guang jumped in immediately. See, the little sister doesn't want to see me at all. Fine, Chu Fei Yan said. Have it your way, but when we came here earlier, we were followed by a couple of little sneaks. You'd better go and get rid of them fast. Your master and I are resting here. You can keep guard outside and keep people from bothering us. If you do your job well, may then maybe I won't mention about your agreeing to be the little sister's apprentice to anyone. Otherwise, I'll just announce it to the entire world. Tian Bo Guang raised his voice and gave a sudden shout. You sneaking little punks, you've got a lot of nerve. A window opened with a bang, followed by the clang of two weapons falling atop the roof. Then someone screamed in pain, while the footsteps of someone running, running away could be heard. Again came, the Again came the sound of a window opening with a bang as Tian Bo Guang leaped down from the roof back to his room. Killed one, a little skulker from the Chincheng Sword School. The other one ran away, he declared. You're hopeless. How could you let one get away? Chu Fei Yan complained. I couldn't kill that one, Tian Bo Guang explained hurriedly. She, she was a nun of the Hangshang Sword School. Oh, so they were followed. They were followed to the brothel. Okay, so one guy was from uh, the Chincheng School, and he he got killed by Tian Bo Guang, and the other one was uh, another nun from the Hangshang School. <clears throat> you can Tom, watch out! We are marching. We will be at your house in seven hundred thirty-two hours, seven hundred thirty-six hours. All right, all right. We'll see. We'll see. Amanda says this is a bit confusing. What's confusing about it? <clears throat> <coughs> Tarantilla, you're having snacks and listening to a story? Yeah. Oh, it's so hot, you guys. My AC is in the other room. I'm sweating inside. 
All right, let's take a let's take a four minute break. Four minute break, and then I'll be back. BRB. Hello, I'm back. Chat is talking about their favorite food, which is my kind of chat. Hmm. Some people like lychee. Yeah, lychee. Lychee is good. Grapes. Peaches. Peaches are good. Mangoes are awesome, especially the sour mangoes. Those are good. My favorite fruit would be mm, pears or apples, either pears or apples. Yeah, they're I like like the really crisp pears, All right? Not the soft ones, like the the ones that you when you eat it, it, it there's a crunch. Mm, so good. <clears throat> What's up with the weird bike? What weird bike? Uh, from the be right back screen uh you guys know i didn't draw that right that's just a stock like picture that came with uh, the software i'm using to stream <laughs> i thought it looked it looked cool so that's what i'm using coconut's good korea hey welcome back put msg in rice with a rice cooker and make it very great oh i never done that before is it really that good I can try it. The bike, uh, there, there seems to be two handles on that bike. Maybe it's a bike. Okay, so it's a bike that can go both ways. So you can, uh, you can ride this way and you can ride the other way. Okay, it's a very free bike. It's called Freedom Bike. We all want freedom. I live in America, guys. We're all about freedom here. I have a story. Like, just really quick. Um, I have a door. I have a, I have a front door that doesn't close all the way. So it's kind of crooked. Um, so you can't lock anything. The only thing you can lock is, uh, is the actual handle with a lock on the handle. Yeah, so there are some latches and none of them work because the door is misaligned. Um, yeah, and then one day, I live in California, so sometimes you get earthquakes. One day, there's a huge earthquake, right? You kind of feel it. Um, so one day, I, I woke up to a little earthquake, and then I walk over. I don't know why. I, uh, I think I walked over to my front door, and it's aligned. Like, it fixed the door. The earthquake fixed the door, <laughs> which is amazing. <clears throat> so now everything is aligned. I can lock everything now. See? I was think I was putting off fixing that door for a long time, so thank God the it it totally fixed it. <clears throat> so the moral the story is um, always put things off. Okay, don't do things you can do today when you can put it off until tomorrow. Amanda says earthquakes. Yeah, earthquakes. We're kind of used to it here in California. Like, they're not a big deal. And we haven't had, a, like, a real big one in a long time. They're mostly really small. <clears throat> Lash says, God fixed the door for you. Mm. Thank you, God. Thank you so much, God. Now fix my life. Patrick says, imagine if you had fixed it the day before the week quick, right? Okay, so dun, 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 dun. Oh, I keep forgetting the sound effects. Okay, they were fighting. They were fighting. Oh, okay, so uh, so uh, Chu Fei Yan um, takes Yilin to a brothel, and then they we find out that they were followed by two people. Okay, one from the Chinchang School and one from the the uh, Hangshang School, which is the nun school, and uh, Chu uh, Chu Fei Yan 
gets Tian Bo Guang to kill one of them. He kills he kills a Qin Cheng guy, and then the other person, the other nun, runs away. Which is cool. And since there's fighting. <clears throat> All right. So it was your it was your uncle master. Of course you couldn't kill her. Chu Fei Yan giggled. Yulin was astonished. She murmured, "Was that my apprentice's sister? What do I do now?" Oh, that's true. Like she Yulin is now seen in the brothel by her sister. Hey, little girl, what's your name? Tian Bo Guang asked. Grinning, Chu Fei Yan said, "You shouldn't ask questions like that." If you keep your mouth shut, your master will put the business of settling her score on hold for now. Tian Guang shut up immediately. Chu, let's leave here quickly, Yilin said urgently. But you haven't seen the patient yet, Chu Feiyan insisted. Didn't you have something to ask him? If you were, if, but if you're afraid of making your master unhappy and want to go back, that's fine with me. Well, I am already here anyway. Let's, let's go see him, Yilin said after thinking for a moment. Chu Feiyan smiled and walked toward the bedside. She pushed the wall at the east of the room, and a secret door opened silently. Chu Feiyan waved. Uh, uh. Chu Feiyan waved at Yilin, motioning her to follow, and then walked through the door. Yilin felt that the whole business with the brothel was getting more and more mysterious. Thank heavens that Tian Bo Guang was in the next room on the west side. She figured the further she was from him, the better. So she gathered her strength and decided to follow Chu in. There was another room inside, but no light. With the illumination from the exterior, she could tell it was a small room. There was also a bed in it, surrounded by, shrouded by a curtain. Shrouded by a curtain. She could vaguely see that somebody was lying on the bed behind the curtain. Yulin stopped at the secret door, but was afraid to go in. Sis, go ahead. Help him with your heavenly connecting glue, Xu Feiyan directed. He, he really knows where Big Brother Ling Hu's body is? Yulin asked in hesitation. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But you said earlier that he did, he did know. Yulin was frustrated. I'm not a gentleman. I'm not a gentleman. I don't have to keep my words. If you want to help him, get to work. Otherwise, just turn around and leave. Nobody, nobody's going to stop you, Chu Feiyan snapped. No matter what the cost is, I need to find Big Brother Ling Hu's body. Even if there is only a slim chance, I can't let it pass, Yilin thought to herself. All right, I will work on him, she declared. She went back to the main room to get the candle, and then walked back to the small room and stopped at the, bedsa, at the bedside. She opened the curtain and saw a man lying on the bed. A green handkerchief covered his face. When he breathed in and out, the cloth moved as well. Not being able to see his face actually gave Yilin a bit of comfort. Where was he wounded? She turned and asked. His chest. The wound is very deep. It barely missed his heart, Chu Feiyan answered. Yilin gently lifted the thin blanket covering his chest. A large wound would be seen, could be seen right in the middle of his, of his bare chest. It had stopped bleeding, but since the gash was so deep, the man was still in critical condition. Yilin calmed herself a little and thought, No matter what it takes, I have to save his life. She, pass, she passed the candle to Chu Feiyan and took the wooden box containing the heavenly connecting glue out of her pocket. After opening the box, she put it on the table at the side of the bed, and then gently pressed down around the margins of the wound. All the pressure points that helped to stop bleeding have already been sealed, otherwise he would be dead by now, Chu Feiyan said in a, in a low voice. Yilin nodded. All the pressure points around the wound had already been properly sealed, much better than what she, she could have achieved by herself. She slowly removed the cotton padding that covered the wound. The, once the padding was removed, blood gushed out. Yilin had, learned to, Yilin had learned how to treat wounds from her seniors. She pressed down on the wound with her left hand and applied the heavenly connecting glue to the wound with her right hand. When she finished, she... When she finished... She immediately put the cotton padding back into the wound. Heavenly Connecting Glue was the Hangshan, the Hangshan Sword School's treasured poultice, prepared by a secret recipe. Once applied to the wound, it stopped bleeding in short order. 
Yilin could hear the man breathing heavily. She wasn't sure if he would survive, so she couldn't resist but to ask the question. Sir, I have something to ask of you. Please, give me an answer. Suddenly, Chu Feiyan tilted her body to the side. The candlestick tilted to the side as well, and the flame suddenly went out. Darkness swept the entire room. Oops, Chu Feiyan let out a cry. The light went out. It was so dark in the room that Yilin could not even see her own fingers. She became quite flustered. How can a member of the Buddhist order remain in such remain in such an unsavory place? I need to leave here as soon as I find out where Big Brother Ling Hu's body is, she thought. With a trembling voice, she asked, Sir, are you feeling a little better now? The man let out a groan, but did not answer her question. He's running a fever. Feel his forehead. It's burning hot. Chu Feiyan exclaimed. Before Yi Lin had a chance to answer, her right hand was already caught by Chu Feiyan and put on top of the man's forehead. Apparently, Chu Feiyan had removed the green handkerchief that covered the man's face earlier. Yi Lin felt as if her fingers touched a burning coal. She couldn't help but to feel pity for him. I also have medicine to take orally. I'd better administer it, she said. Chu, will you please light the candle? Sure, you wait here. I'll go find some flints. Hearing that Feiyang was leaving, Yilin became very nervous. She grabbed onto Feiyang's sleeve. No, no, don't leave. What am I supposed to do here, alone? Chu Feiyang let out a small laugh. Go ahead and take out the medicine, she said. Yilin took out a bottle from her own pockets, for her pocket, opened the bottle and dumped three pills out onto her palm. I have the pills. You give them to him, she said. Better not drop the pills in the dark. This concerns somebody's life. It's no joke. Sis, if you are afraid to be left here alone, then I'll stay here. You go find the flints, Chu Feiyan proposed. Yilin was even more frightened about the idea of wandering around the brothel all by herself. No, no, I am not going, she cried out immediately. Once you decide to save somebody, you've got to follow through. He can't just put the pills in his mouth and then give him some tea to help him swallow. In the dark, he can't see who you are. Oh, wait, you can. You can just put the pills in his mouth and then give him some tea to help him swallow. In the dark, he can't see who you are. What are you so afraid of? Here, here's the teacup. Be careful. Don't drop it, Chu Feiyan said. Slowly reaching out with her hand, Yilin took the tea. Pausing, she thought to herself, Master has always told us that as Buddhists, we should always be merciful to others, saving a life achieves more than building a seven-story pagoda for the, for the Buddha. Even if this man doesn't know where Big Brother Ling Hu's body is, he is on the verge of dying, and I should still try to save his life. So she slowly extended her right hand. When the back of her hand touched the man's forehead, she turned her hand over and placed three white cloud bear gallbladder pills into his room, into his mouth. But... <clears throat> The pills are made of gallbladder? Okay. She sw he swallowed them with the tea served by Yi Lin, and then murmured something that seemed to be the words of gratitude. Sir, I know you are wounded badly. I really should let you rest, but I have one urgent thing to ask of you. Hero Ling Hu Chong was murdered. His body, Yi Lin said. You... you are asking for Ling Hu Chong? The man croaked. Yes. Do you know where Hero Ling Hu Chong's body is? Yilin asked anxiously. The man mumbled some words, but his voice was too low for Yilin to make anything out. Yilin asked one more time, and then moved her ear close to the man's lips, but all she could hear was his heavy breathing. It seemed that he wanted to say something, but could not make the words that come out. Yilin suddenly remembered the heavenly connecting glue and white cloud bear gallbladder pills were a wonderful treatment for wounds, but they were both very strong medicines as well. Particularly after one took the white cloud bear gallbladder pill, he would pass out for a half day. It was just an important step of the healing process. How could she be so self-absorbed as to push him to talk at that moment? She sighed gently and moved out from under the curtain and sat down on a chair near the bed. I'll wait until he feels better and then ask again, she murmured to herself. 
Sis, is he going to be all right? Xu Feiyan asked. I hope he will recover, but the wound on his chest is really deep. True, who, who is he? Yilin asked, but Xu Feiyan did not answer. My grandpa said you couldn't let go of a, th you couldn't let a lot of things go. Xu Feiyan said after a while. You really shouldn't be a nun. Your grandpa knows me? Yilin asked in surprise. How does he, he know that I cannot let things go? Yesterday, in the Huayan Wine House, Grandpa and I were watching your fight with Tian Bo Kuang. Ah, Yilin said. So your grandpa was the one sitting with you. Yeah, Xu Feiyan smiled. Your big brother Ling Hu had a really quick, really had a quick tongue. When he said he was the second best at fighting while sitting down, Grandpa actually believed him and thought he really knew some kind of sword art he created while on the toilet that could defeat Tian Bo Kuang. <laughs> Yilin could not see her face in the dark, but she could imagine the little girl must be giggling quite hard. The more gleeful Chu Feiyan was, the more sorrow Yilin felt. Chu Feiyan went on. Later, after Tian Bo Guang ran away, Grandpa said he had no guts. He had promised to be your apprentice and should have kowtowed to you and called you master. How could he go against his word? Big Brother Ling Hu only tricked him to save my life. He did not really win the fight, Yilin explained. Sis, you are truly kind. After the way Tian Bo Guang treated you, you're still making excuses for him. Anyway, after Big Brother Ling Hu was killed, you just carried his body and wandered around with no specific destination. Grandpa, Grandpa said, This little nun is really a passionate girl, and I, I am afraid she is going to go crazy. Let's follow her and watch. So the two of us followed behind you and watched how you just carried his body and didn't want to let him go. Grandpa said, Fei Fei. See how upset this little nun is? If this lad Ling Hu Chong weren't dead, the little nun would definitely give up on the nunnery and marry him. Yilin flushed with great embarrassment. She could feel her face and ears burning in the dark. I think, that, I think that's true. Oh, hey, Tarantilia. Tarantilia. Thanks for the super chat. Super sticker. It's a cake. With, a, with one candle, I'm one years old. Dum, dum, dum. <clears throat> Lash says, Sir, would you like some bear gallbladder with your tea? I don't know. Like, it seems to make you fall asleep, right? Maybe it's just like serotonin. I wouldn't mind some bear gallbladder. I want to go to sleep. I want to take a nap right now, you guys. But no, I can't because of you bastards. And Nikki says, Nikki says, Yilin's thinking about quitting anyway. I know, right? I think she... <laughs> like, if Ling Hu Chung was alive, she might just leave the, nun the nunnery. Sis, was my grandpa right? He died because of me, Yilin said. I really wish I was the one who died instead of him. If Buddha pities me and lets me die in exchange for Big Brother Ling Hu's life, I, I, even if I had to fall all the way to the bottom of the 18th level of hell and never be reborn again, I would not complain. Her voice was filled with sincerity as she said those words. Wow. I don't know, that's a little creepy. Like, she just met him, right? Come on. Like, she's falling a little bit too hard. All of a sudden, the man on the bed let out a groan. He, he is awake. Chu, would you please ask him if he feels better? Yilin said happily. Why do I have to be the one to ask? Don't you have a tongue of your own? Chu Feiyan demanded. Yilin walked to the bed after a slight hesitation, and with the curtain in between them, asked, Sir, are you... Before she could finish, the man let out several more groans. He is in great pain right now. I shouldn't bother, bother him, she thought. So she just stood there, quietly. The man's breathing gradually fell into a short, into a slow rhythm. Apparently the medicine was doing its work, and he had, fall, he had fallen asleep again. Sis, Chu Feiyan whispered, why would you die for Ling Hu Chung? Don't, do you really like him that much? 
Oh, Terrencilia. Thank you for the super chat again. Says you pronounced my name right. Yes. Lost says, when is it your birthday? Uh, it's October 24th. That's when my birthday is. Oh, that's in like two months. Hmm. My first per birthday in a pandemic where I can't even uh, do anything on my birthday. I can't celebrate it. <laughs> Sad face. Nikki. <laughs> Nikki says Yilin's gonna bring Linghu back and find out what goes on in brothels. Wait, why would she bring him back to a brothel? Wouldn't she bring him to her bedroom? Why go to a brothel? That's all, like that's expensive. Dun dun dun. What is chat? Is chat stuck? Really? It's not for me. Anyways. Sis, Chu Feiyan whispered, Why would you die for Ling Hu Chong? Do you really like him that much? No, no, Miss Chu, I am a Buddhist nun. Yeah, sure. Please don't say such disrespectful words to the Buddha. Big brother Ling Hu and I had never m met each other before, but he gave his life to save mine. I, I just feel I owe him so much, Yilin said breathlessly. What if he was alive again? Would you be willing to do anything for him? Yes, even if I had to die a thousand times for him, I would have no complaints. Chu Feiyan suddenly raised her voice again and said, Big Brother Ling Hu, listen up. Sis Yilin said it herself. Don't joke about it. Yilin cut her off angrily. Chu Feiyan simply ignored her and continued in a loud voice. She said, if you are not dead, she would do anything for you. From Chu's tone, Yilin could feel that she was, wasn't really joking. Her heart started pounding faster and faster, and she also began to get dizzy. She could only murmur, You, you. Within seconds, Chu Feiyan lit a candle. She opened the curtain and waved Yilin over with a big smile on her face. Yilin wa slowly walked to the bed full of dread. Suddenly, it seemed as if the entire world started swirling around her. She found herself falling down to the ground. Chu Feiyan quickly caught her by the shoulder before she actually hit the floor. I know this is going to be a big surprise. Go ahead and see who he is, she, ex she exclaimed. He, he, Yilin's voice was so weak that she could hardly breathe. Although the man on the bed had his eyes shut tightly, with his thick eyebrows and thin lips on a long rectangular face, Yilin immediately recognized him. It was none other than the one who had fought at the Huayan wine house, Ling Hu Chong. Dun dun dun! I think we all knew what was happening. <laughs> it was pretty obvious. <clears throat> so Ling Hu Chong is still alive. Thank God. Oh, Nikki. Yilin probably doesn't know that folks pay for attention at brothels. I think Nikki has a uh, has um is very familiar with what goes on at brothels. Dun, dun. <clears throat> Losh says, it's so funny how Yilin is as much in denial as she is in love. Yeah. Oh, Amanda, you knew it? Yeah, good job. Now, did he hear what she said? Mm, no, I'm not sure. Yilin grabbed Chu Feiyan's arm tightly. He, he is not dead? She asked in a trembling voice. He is not dead yet, but if your medicine doesn't work, he'll die soon, Chu Feiyan smiled gently. He won't die. He definitely, he definitely won't die. He, he is alive. Filled with surprise and happiness, the emotions were just too much for Yilin, so she started crying. Hey, he's not dead. What, what are you crying for? Chu Feiyan asked curiously. Yilin felt her legs were giving out on her, so she had to lean on the bed as she continued to shed more tears. I am so happy, she said. Chu, I don't know how to thank you enough. You saved, saved the big brother Ling Hu. Hey, you saved him. I don't have the skills to save him, and I don't have heavenly connecting glue either, Chu Feiyan said. Suddenly, Yilin understood. She stood up slowly and held Chu Feiyan's hand. Your grandpa did it. It was your grandpa. 
Someone shouted outside, Yilin! Yilin! Uh-oh. That was the voice of Sister Ding Yi. Oh no, it's her master, just outside. Yilin was astounded and was just about to answer when Chu Fei Yan blew out the candle in her hands and then covered Yilin's mouth. Don't you remember what this kind what kind of a place this is? Don't answer, she hissed at Yilin. Yilin found herself bewildered. It was quite embarrassing being in a brothel, but refusing to answer her master's call, that was something she had never done before in her life. Ding Yi's voice rang out. Tian Bo Guang, get your ass out here. Let Yilin go. Tian Bo Guang's laughter came from the west side room. Well, if it isn't the white cloud nunnery senior sister Ding Yi of the Hangshang Sword School, he continued cackling for a few moments and then finally spoke. I really should go out to pay my respects, but to leave all these cute ladies here on my bed alone wouldn't be good manners either. I guess I'll just stay here then. Ha 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 ha. The coquettish, the coquettish laughter of several girls joined. Obviously, the women were prostitutes. Sweetheart, don't pay attention to her. Give me another kiss. One of them said husk. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's the girl talking. Sweetheart, don't pay any attention to her. Give me another kiss. One of them said huskily. The lascivious voices of the woman became louder and louder. Tian Bo Guang must have egged them on to keep Sister Ding Yu away. Oh, Tarantilia says five spice beer powder. Wait. I know five spice powder. You know your Asian spices. Pronounce coquettish. Coquettish. Coquettish? Are you sure? Are you guys sure? Alright. I have to double check chat. Coquettish. Coquettish. Okay, you're right, you're right. Alright, well, whatever. I knew that. You guys passed the test. Coquette, coquette. <laughs> <laughs> coquettish 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 it should really be coquettish that's how it's spelled Ding Yu was outraged Tian Bo Guang if you don't get your ass out here I will cut you into 10,000 pieces she shouted Tian Bo Guang laughed if I don't get my ass out, my ass out, you'll cut me to pieces. If I do ass, haul my ass out, you'll cut me into pieces just as well. I guess I'd better keep my ass put. Sister Ding Yi, you nuns really shouldn't be in places like this. Why don't you go back to your nice convent? Your apprentice is not here. She is a model nun who always follows all the convent rules. Why would she come here? Don't you think it's rather bizarre for your holiness to come here to look for your apprentice? Ding Yi exploded. Blazes! I'm going to set this damn place on fire. We'll see how long he can stay in there, she retorted. Tian Bo Guang laughed again. Sister Ding Yu, this spot is named the Jade House, and it is one of the most famous sites in the town of Hangshang. I suppose it would be no big deal if you set it on fire, but when the story gets out, everybody will know that it, it was Sister Ding Yu from the White Cloud Nunnery of the Hangshang Sword School who burnt down the Jade House brothel in Hangshang. People who heard this would ask themselves, Sister Ding Yi is a respectful senior sister, why would she go to such a filthy place? The, the answer would be that she went there to look for her apprentice. People who heard this would have to ask, why did the apprentice of the Hangshan Sword School go to the Jade House? I'm guessing that all these questions couldn't do the reputation of your school any good. Let me tell you something. Tian Bo Guang fears nothing, and nobody in this entire world except that apprentice of yours. I'd be busy running away at the sight of her. How would I be able to bother her? Mm. Coquettish. I got it, guys. I got it. Ding Yi reluctantly saw his points, but an apprentice had reported that she saw Yilin walking into his, this house with her own eyes, and Tian Bo Guang had also attacked her. There could have been no mistake. Her anger kept growing, but the only thing she could do was to stamp the flagstones beneath her feet. Tian Bo Guang, did you murder my apprentice, Peng Rangji? Demanded a voice from a, the roof across the way. 
The master of the Chinchang Sword School had arrived. Okay. Everyone's here. It seems. In 30 minutes. All right, guys. Let's take another break. Five minutes. Five minutes. While I get a drink. Be right back. Still drinking this boba, pretty good. All right, so it looks like two masters are at the brothel now. Ding Yi and, uh, what's his name? Yu Tsanghai. <clears throat> <clears throat> Aha! Even the respectful master of Ching Chung Sword School has come to visit, Tian Bo Guang crowed. Hong Shang Jade House is going to be so appallingly famous from now on, they'll never need to worry about getting business again. I did kill a fellow. His sword skills were ordinary, but seemed to be the moves of the Ching Chung Sword School. But as to whether his name was Peng Reng Chi or not, sorry, I really didn't have the time to ask. Within the space of a blink, Yu Sanghai leapt into Tiang Bo Guang's room, and the sounds of a shower of ringing steel followed. <laughs> Yu Sanghai had started fighting with Tiang Bo Guang. Sister Ding Yi stood on the roof and listened to the sound of clashing weapons. That rascal Tiang Bo Guang really has some skills, she thought to herself. His quick knife strokes seems to seem to be evenly matched with the sword thrusts from the mass. Fuck! Screen switch. God damn it. All right. That's one shot, right? That's one shot. That's one shot at the end. Ah. I'm going to count that shot as the one that I put in the, uh, the, the boba that we agreed to earlier. <clears throat> no, we got to put the text on. God damn it. I keep forgetting. <clears throat> Alright, so, so they're fighting. Suddenly there was a loud bang, followed by absolute silence. Yulin held onto Chu Feiyan's hand tightly. Cold sweat soaked her palms. She had no idea who had won the fight. Tian or Yu? Tian Bo Guang had bullied her several times, and she should have wished for Yu Sanghai to win, but deep in her heart, she was really hoping the opposite. It would be better if Yu Sanghai were to just leave, and same with her master, so Ling Hu Chang could rest and heal peacefully and quietly. Oh, she's still thinking about him. He was already on the brink of death, and if Yu Sanghai rushed in the room, the stress itself would surely cause his wounds to break open and kill him. Tian Bo Guang's voice rose from afar. Master Yu, don't you think it's a little crowded in this room? Let's go to the clearing in the field and fight a couple of hundred rounds and see who the better man is. If you win, I'll relinquish this cute, haughty little jade to you. But if you lose, this chick will have to be mine. Yu Sanghai almost exploded in anger. The scoundrel's words had implied that they were fighting to gain the favor of a whore named Little Jade in the Jade House. He considered this situation. When they were fighting inside the room, over 50 rounds had passed in no time. Tian Bo Guang's knife moves were well organized and balanced, with both attacks and defenses. His skills were really no less than that of his own. Even if they were to fight another couple of hundred rounds, he still couldn't assure a victory. Everything quieted down. Yilin could even hear her own harp. Yilin could even hear her own harp beat. Yilin could even hear her own. Yilin could even hear her own heartbeat. 
She leaned closer to Chu's ear and asked in a whisper, Do you think they will come in here? Chu was actually much younger than her, yet Yilin was completely lost in such an embarrassing situation. Chu did not answer and just covered Yilin's mouth with her hand. Liu Chengfeng's voice suddenly rose. Master Yu, the villain Chen Bo Guang, has committed so many crimes, he definitely won't come to a good end. We'll get him eventually. There's no rush right now. This brothel has been the source of much immoral behavior. I have always wanted to trash it. Please, let me handle this. Danyang, Wu Yi, Wei Yi, let's search inside. Don't let anybody leave. Oh man, everyone's here. Like the whole crew. Xiang Danyang and Mu Wei Yi, the two... And Mi Wei Yi, the two apprentices of Liu House, acknowledged the command in unison. Ding Yi also sent out orders and had her apprentices surround the brothel. Yilin became increasingly worried. She could hear the voices of the apprentices from the Liu House coming closer and closer, searching the room after room. Liu Chengfeng and Yu Sanghai stood by the side and directed the apprentices. Loud cries from the proprietors could be clearly heard while they were thrashed by Xiang Danyang. Mi Wei Yi and the rest of the apprentices. Apprentices of the Qingcheng Sword School began smashing the furniture, teacups, and wine kettles, leaving a trail of destruction behind them. It's not nice. Knowing that all those people would soon arrive, Yilin was so worried that she almost passed out. Rice Boy, hey, bye, thanks for joining. Four shots of milk? What does that mean? My master came to rescue me, she thought, and I did not answer her call. I am in a brothel and in the same room with big brother Ling Hu late at night. Even though he is badly wounded, when all those guys from the Hangshang Sword School and the Qingcheng Sword School come in all at once, I wouldn't be able to explain even if I had a hundred tongues. The reputation of the Hangshang Short School would undoubtedly be damaged. And how, how could I face my master and all the apprentice sisters again? She drew her sword and brought the blade toward her own throat. Okay, that's a little too much. Xu Feiyan heard the sound of an unsheathing sword and instantly realized what Yilin was doing. She grasped Yilin's wrist quickly. Stop! Let's dash out together, she whispered. Sounds of movement came from the bed. Ling Hu Chong had sat up. Light up the candle, he whispered. Why? Xu Fei Yan asked. I am telling I'm telling you to light up the candle, Ling Hu Chong said. His voice had a tone of authority to it. Xu Fei Yan did not say another word and lit the candle. With the light of the candle, Yulin could see Ling Hu Chong's white and bloodless face, a face that looked almost like that of a corpse. She uttered a cry. Ling Hu Chong pointed at his overcoat at the end of the bed. Put that over, over my shoulders, he said. While trembling like a falling leaf in a storm, Yilin picked up the overcoat and draped it over Ling Hu Chong's shoulders. Ling Hu Chong pulled, from, pulled the front of the overcoat so it covered all the blood stains and the wound on his chest. You two, lie on the bed, he said. This is fun, Chu Fei Yan giggled. She dragged Yilin and slipped under the quilt. By then, people outside had noticed the candlelight in the room. Let's check that room out, someone shouted. They all started to head toward the small room. Ling Hu Chong took a deep breath and rushed to close the door and locked it with a wooden bar. He walked back to the bed and lifted the curtain. Hide under the quilt, he ordered. Don't, don't move too much. Watch out for your wounds, Yilin begged. Ling Hu Chong stuck his left hand out and pushed her head under the quilt while pulling Chu's long hair out from under the quilt and spreading it all over the pillow. Just that simple movement and his wound opened, causing blood to gush out again. He lost the strength from his legs and had to sit on the bed. Someone had already started knocking on the door heavily like, a beating, like beating a drum. You son of a turtle, open the door, one of them shouted. Then with a loud cracking sound, the door was kicked open and four people rushed in. Do I have a sound effect for that? No, I just have this. The leading one was none other than the Qingcheng apprentice 
Hong Rong Xiong. Astonished at seeing Ling Hu Chong, he immediately jumped back several paces. Ling Hu? It's Ling Hu Chong, he muttered. Xiang Danian and Mi, Mi Wei Yi had never met Ling Hu Chong before, but, as, but had both heard that Lu Rangjie had killed him. When they heard Hong Rang Xiong shouting out Ling Hu Chong's name, both were shocked and also stepped back. Everybody had his eyes wide open and just gazed at Ling Hu Chong. Ling Hu Chong stood up slowly. You. This many people, he muttered. Ling Hu, Ch Ling Hu Chong, you're, you're not dead? Hong Rong Chong murmured. How can I die so easily? Ling Hu Chong answered coldly. Yu Tsang Hai stepped out. You are Ling Hu Chong? Excellent, excellent, he said. Ling Hu Chong gave him a glance, but did not answer. What are you doing in this brothel? Yu Kang Hai demanded. Ling Hu Chong started laughing. Are you kidding me? What do you think people do in brothels? I've heard that the Huashang Sword School had very strict rules, Yu Changhai said coldly. You are the senior apprentice of the Huashang School, the best student of Gentleman Sword, Mr. Yue. Yet you sneak up here to sleep with prostitutes? Very funny. How very ironic. Whatever rules the Huashang Sword School has, Ling Hu Chang said, that's our own business. No need for you or anyone else to worry about it. Yu Changhai was an experienced person. Seeing Ling Hu Chang's extremely white face because of loss of blood and his trembling legs, he could tell that Ling Hu Chang had been wounded badly. Could this be a trap? Then he thought, the little nun of the Hangshang Sword School said this guy was killed by Ran Jie, but he is actually still alive. Obviously, the little nun was lying to cover things up. During her tale, she called him Big Brother Ling Hu this and Big Brother Ling Hu that, full of tenderness. Maybe they have already become a couple. Someone saw the little nun coming to this brothel, but no one could find her. Most likely, this guy has hidden her somewhere. Huh. The Five Mountains Sword Alliance always consider themselves to the true martial arts academies and look down, look down upon my Qingcheng Sword School. If I can sort that little nun out, then not only would the reputation of the Huashang Sword School and the Hangshang Sword School be trashed, the entire Five Mountains Sword Alliance would also be humiliated, and they would never be able to flaunt themselves in the martial world again. He looked around quickly, but did not see any other people with Ling Hu Chong. Looks like that little nun is hiding under the bed, he concluded. <clears throat> Ren Xiong, lift open the bed curtain. Let's find out what show kind of show we have in the bed. Wait, what? Ren Xiong, lift open the bed curtain. Let's find out what kind of show we have in the bed. He said to Hong Ren Xiong. Yes, Master, Hong Ren Xiong answered and then stepped forward. With his previous unpleasant encounter with Ling Hu Chong in mind, he couldn't help glancing at Ling Hu Chong and hesitating. Do you want to die? Ling Hu Chong threatened. Whoa, that's badass. Hong Ren Xiong choked, but thinking of the presence of his master, he felt better and drew his sword. <clears throat> What do you want? Ling Hu Chong asked of Yu Kang Hai. The Hangshang Sword School lost the female apprentice. Someone saw her in this brothel. So we need to search here, Yu Sang Hai demanded. This is the Five Mountains Sword Alliance's own matter. Why doesn't the Qingchang Sword School mind its own business? Ling Hu Chong mocked. We will find an answer today, whether you like it or not. Ren Xiong, go for it, Yu Sang Hai ordered. Yes, sir. Hong Ren Xiong held his sword out and lifted the bed curtain with the blade. Yi Lin and Chu Fei Yan grabbed onto each other and hid under the quilt. They heard every word between Ling Hu Chong and Yu Chang Hai loud and clear. Greatly worried, they could not help trembling. When, then when they heard the sound of Hong Ren Xiong lifting the bed curtain, both were frightened to death. After Hong Ren Xiong had lifted up the bed curtain, everyone stared at the bed. There was a large red silk quilt with two loving birds embroidered on it. Obviously, there was someone under the quilt. Long black hair spread all over the pillow. The quilt was trembling. The person under the quilt must have been terrified. Yu Sang Hai was very disappointed when he saw the long hair of the pillow. It was quite obvious that the one under the quilt was not a bald little nun. Ling Hu Chong was really sleeping with the prostitute. Master Yu, Ling Hu Chong said coldly, Although you are a Taoist priest, I heard that Qingcheng priests don't have rules against marriage, and you've already got yourself many wives. 
If you are so fond of naked women and wanted to see the girl dead, what is it? Wait, and wanted to see the girl naked, why don't you go ahead and lift up the quilt to have a good look? Why pretend to look for a female apprentice of the Hangshang Sword School? Damn you! Yu Chang Yu Sanghai yelled while throwing a knife hand chop at Ling Hu Chong. Ling Hu Chong turned his body aside to dodge the blow coming toward him, but he was quite weak because of the wounds and wasn't able to dodge fast enough. The edge of Yu Sanghai's chopping blow glanced his body. He could not hold himself steady and collapsed onto the bed. Gathering all his strength, Ling Hu Chong stood up again, but blood began dripping on, out the corner of his mouth. His body shook a couple of times as he spit out some more blood. Yu Sanghai wanted to hit him again, but out of the blue, a voice came from, from outside the window. So here we see uh, him spitting up blood. You'll see this a lot of times. Like whatever happens, like they get a little wound, or they get attacked, they'll just to show you that they're they're being injured. That he people just spit out blood. Linfamy isn't black, he's obviously a hamster? Okay. I am a hamster then. Where am I? So out of the blue, a voice came from outside the window. A senior bullies a junior, how shameless. Yu Chang'ai did not waste any time. Before the last word had ended, he had already thrown a blow toward the window. Immediately following the blow, he jumped out of the window. From the illumination of the candlelight from inside the room, he saw an ugly hunchback turning around the corner of the house. Hold it, he shouted. The hunchback was really Lin Pingzhi in disguise. After the conflict with Yu Sanghai and Liu Changfang's house, in Liu Changfang's house, he slipped out while Yu Sanghai had his mind on the little girl, Chu Feiyan. He hid behind a corner of the house and did not know what to do. He could not think of any way to rescue his parents. I feel like I'm starting to have trouble reading. I think that happens after like an hour and a half of reading. I start faltering. <laughs> also, one thing, guys. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're confused, but um, this story, how is it written, is written in a, a third-person omniscient point of view. So if you don't know, there are like a lot of point of views that you can have while well, when you like when you write a book. <clears throat> so novels can have um, you know first person point of view, which is where the narrator is the uh, the narrator um, is the one narrating. <laughs> I'm not explaining this very well. So first person point of view is when you use like I or me. And then third person is when you use he or she, right? So in third person, um, the narrator is outside of the action and he's like narrating um, the book. So, he's, he, he, so he would use the pronouns he and she, stuff like that. But uh, there are two types, I think, two main types of third person point of view. Um, one is third person limited and the second one is third person omniscient. So third person limited is like um, in every chapter, there's one person that you're following. So you're in the head of one person, right? So you only know what that one person is thinking and you don't know uh, what the other people are thinking. Okay, So you can only see what one person sees. But uh, third person omniscient is that um, you can see, you can pop into every, anyone's head, right? So in any one scene, you'll know exactly what everyone is thinking. So this is kind of like that, right? He, you can see he jumps from one, so in one paragraph, he may be in the head of Yu Sanghai. 
And then in another paragraph, he'll be in the head of someone else. So it might be a little confusing, but yeah. So now we're in the head of Lin Pingchir. So we find out what's been happening to him. <clears throat> the hunchback was really Lin Pingchir in disguise. After the conflict with Yu Sanghai in Liu Chengfeng's house, he slipped out while Yu Sanghai had his mind on the little girl, Chu Feiyan. He hid behind the corner of the house and did not know what to do. He could not think of any way to rescue his parents. Everyone in the hall will have remembered me as the ugly, hun as the ugly hunchback, he thought aloud. When those people from the Chincheng Sword School see me again, they will definitely kill me without hesitation. Should I change back to my original look? He thought of how Yu Sanghai had grabbed onto his wrist. He had felt like he had lost all his strength and couldn't even struggle to get away. How could there be someone with such outstanding martial skills? All these thoughts flooded his mind. He completely lost track of time. He had no, he had no idea how long he had been hiding around the corner when he suddenly felt a pat on his hunchback. Stunned, he turned back quickly. The first thing he saw was a tall hunchback. It was none other than the real hunchback, Hunchback of the North. Mu Gaofeng. You fake hunchback, Mu grinned. What's so good about being a hunchback? Why the hell do you pretend to be my grandchild? Lin Pingchu knew the hunchback was a very vicious man with a very high martial arts skills. If any of his words displeased Mu, he could easily end up dead. He thought since he had already kowtowed to him, when they were back in the great hall and called him a true hero, that helped the weak to fight. That helped the weak to fight the villains, and Mu did not get mad. All he needed to do was to keep the same tone. Then he surely wouldn't make Mu Gaofeng mad. I heard from many people that the Hunchback of the North, Hero Mu, has a very reputable name, and he always helped the weak when we when needed. I truly admire you, and that's why I dressed myself just like Hero Mu. Please forgive me, he apologized. Are you kidding me? A reputable name? And helping the weak when needed? What nonsense! Mu Gaofeng laughed. He knew Lin Pingjir was lying to his face, yet all these compliments sounded very enjoyable and pleasing. What's your name? Who's your master? He asked. Lin is really my family name. I, un I unintentionally use your last name, Lin Pingjir said. Mu Gaofeng smirked. Cut the crap! You just wanted to use my name to swindle and bluff. Yu Sanghai is the master of the Chincheng Sword School. He could kill you just by poking you with one finger, and you are so bold as to offend him. You really have some guts. Hearing Yu Sanghai's name mentioned, Lin Pingchu's anger instantly exploded. As long as I am breathing, one day I will slay the scoundrel myself, he exclaimed loudly. What score do you have with Yu Sanghai? asked the surprised Mu Gaofeng. Lin Pingzhi hesitated for a few seconds. He thought, there's no way for me to rescue my mom and dad all by myself. Why don't I ask him to help? So he knelt down and kowtowed to Mu Gaofeng. My parents are his prisoners. I am begging you. Will you please help me rescue them? Mu Gaofeng frowned and shook his head. I never do anything that does not benefit me. Who is your dad? What do, what do I get if I rescue him? Someone's voice suddenly came from the door, whispering with urgency. Go tell Master that in the brothel known as the Jade House, another Chincheng Sword School member has been killed. Also, someone from the Hangsheng Sword School was wounded and just got back. Hurry. We'll talk about your troubles later, Mu Gaofeng whispered to Lin Pingzhi. There's going to be a good show. Come with me if you want to see some fun. As long as I am with him, I can always beg him later, Lin Pingzhi thought. So he replied, "Sure, sure. Whatever you, the respectful senior, want to go. Uh, wherever you, the respectful senior, want to go, I'll follow." Let's get this straight first. I, Hunchback Mu, only do things that can that I can benefit from. If you think brown nosing can get your grandpa into, bleh. if you think brown nosing can get your grandpa to get into trouble for you, save yourself the trouble and just forget about it," Mu Gaofeng exclaimed. Lin Pingjir just nodded and didn't say a word. They've left. They've left. Follow me, Mu Gaofeng said. 
Lin Pingju only felt his right wrist was grabbed tightly, and before he knew it, he was already in the air and seemed to be speeding along the streets without even touching the ground. Soon, they arrived outside the Jade House. The two of them hid behind a tree and peered at the scene before them. They heard everything, including the fights between Yu Shanghai and Tian Bo Guang, the search led by Liu Changfeng's apprentices, and the, then the words of Lin Hu Chong. When Yu Shanghai wanted to hit Lin Hu Chong again, Lin Pingxi could not hold his anger any longer and shouted out, A senior bullies a junior, how shameless! Right after that, he realized he had acted very rashly and quickly turned around to hide. But Yu Sanghai came so fast that with the words hold it, the power of his hands had already immobilized Lin Pingzhi. <clears throat> QP, hey, yes, I am Vietnamese. I am Vietnamese. I'm mostly Vietnamese. I'm also part Chinese. The best parts. Tarantilia, I look American. I look white. Do I look white? That's not true. Some people say I look Filipino. What do you guys think? Terence Ilya, I speak English but don't always use consonants as well as infamy. I don't know, I've been reading for a while. I think I, after an hour and a half of, of reading, I start like, I don't know, I start slurring my words. I feel like, I don't know. All right, so Yu Sanghai, Yu Sanghai grabbed Lin Pingzhi's hands. At that moment, all Yu needed to do was to release his inner energy, and Lin Pingzhi's internal organs would be smashed into pieces. But after recognizing that it was the young hunchback, Yu Sanghai held back his strength and did not strike. So it's you, he sneered. He looked at Mu Gaofeng, who stood about 10 feet behind Lin Pingzhi. Hunchback Mu, why do you instigate juniors to trouble me over and over? What do you want? He demanded. Mu Gaofeng burst into loud laughter. He claims to be my junior, but I never said he was. His name is Lin, and mine is Mu. I have nothing to do with him. Master Yu, I, Hunchback Mu, am not afraid of you. I just don't want to be a retard. <laughs> Damn translation. I just don't want to be a dumb person and shield trouble for no, some nobody. If there were great benefits for being a shield, the, like piles of gold or jewels or something, then I'd consider doing it. Free service like this will never interest me. Yu Sanghai was quite happy to hear these words. If this individual has nothing to do with Brother Mu and is only an imposter, then I don't have to worry on your behalf, he said. He was just about to strike out when he heard someone speaking. A senior bullies a junior. How shameless. Yu Sanghai turned back and saw a man standing by the window. It was none other than Ling Hu Chong. Yu Sanghai was infuriated, but the words, a senior bullies a junior, how shameless, were right on target. The two young men's kung fu skills were no match for him. To kill them would be as easy as stepping on a puny ant, but he would never be able to get rid of the remark, a, a senior bullies a junior. And if the remark of a senior bullies a junior were true, of course, shameless would be a natural conclusion. But if he just simply let these two off, he wouldn't be able to vent his anger. He sneered and said to Ling Hu Chong, I'll have your master pay for your insolence later. Then he turned to Lin Pingzhi. Which school are you from? He asked. You murderous monster, you ruined my whole family, and you are still asking me? Lin Pingzhi yelled furiously. Oh, finally, we have this confrontation. <clears throat> Remember, Yu Sanghai was the one who, yeah, who 
kidnapped and uh, kidnap his family. Yu Senghai was confused. Have I met you before? How did I ruin your family? What are you talking about? He thought to himself. Wait. Oh, that, that was him thinking. Have I met you before? How did I ruin your family? What are you talking about? He thought to himself. With so many people around watching, he did not want to ask for more details. So he turned to Hong Rongsheng. Rongsheng, waste him first, then seize Ling Hu Chong. If a Qincheng apprentice did it, it wouldn't be a senior bully as a junior. Hong Rongsheng answered, Yes, master. He drew his sword and jumped forth. Lin Pingchu went for his own sword, but before he could unsheathe it, Hong Rongsheng's cold, long, cold sword was already pointed at his chest. Lin Pingchu yelled, Yu Sanghai, I, Lin Pingchu, will... Astounded, Yu Sanghai hurriedly struck out with his left palm. The energy of the strike sent Hong Renshong's thrust aside, and the sword barely missed Lin Pingchi's right arm. What did you say? Yu Sanghai asked. Even if I, Lin Pingchu, have, have to become a disembodied ghost, I'll come back and kill you, Lin Pingchu exclaimed. Are you... Are you Lin Pingzhi from the Fortune Prestige Escort House? Yu Sanghai asked in shock. Lin Pingzhi thought, Since I can't hide my identity anymore, I'd rather have a quick death. So he pulled the plasters off his face and said loudly, That's right, I am Lin Pingzhi from the Fuzhou Fortune Prestige Escort House. Your son harassed an innocent girl and I killed him. You ruined my whole family. Where, where are you keeping my father and my mother? The news of Qin Cheng's triumph over the Fortune Prestige Escort House had spread all over the martial world. Most people didn't know that Evergreen had lost in a sword fight with Lin Yuan Tu, so rumors said it was really because of the Qin Cheng Sword School wanted to seize the Lin family's manuscript of the evil resisting sword art, and because Ling Hu Chong had heard the rumor, he used it to lure Luo Ranjie into coming closer and then killed him. Mu Gaofeng had also heard the rumor. After the fake hunchback claimed to be Lin Pingzhi from the Fortune Prestige Escort House, seeing how Yu Sanghai knocked aside Hong Ranxiang's sword in such a hurry and how he acted so nervously, Mu Gaofeng had no doubt that Yu Sanghai really wanted to track down the evil resisting sword manuscript with help from this young man. When Yu Sanghai stretched his, uh, when Yu Sanghai stretched his arm out and grabbed onto Lin Pingzhi's right wrist, pulling his arm back to drag Lin over, Mu Gaofeng shouted. Hold it! He jumped forth rapidly and grabbed onto Lin Pingzhi's left wrist and started pulling as well. Lin Pingzhi could felt two great sources of power pulling his arms in opposite directions. All his joints started, started popping and he almost passed out from the severe pain. Yu Sanghai knew very well that Lin Pingzhi would die instantly if he pulled any harder. So he thrust his longsword at Mu Gaofeng as he yelled out loudly, Brother Mu, let it go! Mu Gaofeng waved his right arm and blocked the sword with a shining crescent knife. A loud ring echoed. <laughs> Wasting no time, Yu Sanghai launched his sword attacks, and within seconds, he had sent nine thrusts at Mu Gaofeng. Brother Mu, we don't have any score between us. Why should we hurt our relationship because of this lad? He said while tightly grabbing Lin Pingzhi's right wrist. Waving his crescent knife back and forth, Mu Gaofeng countered all of Yu, Kanghai, Yu Sanghai's attacks. Earlier, right in front of everyone's eyes, this lad kowtowed to me and called me grandpa. Everyone saw that and heard that. Although I don't have any score to settle with you, Master Yu, you don't think it would be don't you think it would look bad for me if you seize someone who just called me grandpa and then kill him right in front of my eyes? If this grandpa can't even protect his grandson, then who else is going to call me, me grandpa in the future? The two talked as they fought at a faster and faster pace. The clash of weapons also became more urgent. Brother Mu, this man killed my son. How can I forget the pain of losing a son and not avenge him? Yu Sanghai said angrily. Sure, Mu Gaofeng laughed. For Master Yu's sake, I'll help you seek your revenge. Come on, you pull to the left and I'll pull to the right. One, two, three. Let's tear this lad in two. After the words, he actually started counting. One, 
two, and three. As soon as he spat out the word three, he pulled harder. More of Lin Pingju's joints popped. Yu Changhai was stunned. There was no need to rush the revenge. Before finding the sword art manuscript, he definitely didn't want to let Lin Pingju die. So he let go of Lin's wrist at once, letting Mu Gaofeng pull Lin Pingju away. Hey, thanks, Mu Gaofeng grinned. Master Yu is really a true friend. You even gave up revenge for your son, for Hunchback Mu's sake. There's no other one in the martial world who respects brotherhood as much as you do. I am glad Brother Mu knows that. I'll give him a little... I'll give in a... I'll give in a little this time. There won't be a second time, Yu Changhai said coldly. Who knows? Maybe Master Yu would be nice next time and dive in again, Mu Gaofeng snickered. With a disgruntled snort, Yu Sanghai waved his left arm. Let's go, he commanded, and all the Qincheng apprentices left, following their master. So Yu Sanghai does not want to kill uh, Lin Pingjie just yet, right? He wants that, that uh, sword art manuscript. Ooh, this chapter is long. At that moment, Sister Ding Yu had gone south together with all the Hangshang nuns, trying to locate Yi Lin. Liu Chengfeng and his apprentices had gone to the southeast corner and continued their search. So after the group from the Xincheng Sword School left, only Mu Gaofeng and Lin Pingjie stood outside of the Jade House. Hey, you are not a hunchback. You are a handsome lad, Mu Gaofeng said with a grin. Lad, you don't have to call me grandpa. I kind of like you. How about I take you as my apprentice? Lin Pingjie was still in pain from being pulled between two types of high-level inner energy and had just caught his breath. Hearing Mu Gaofeng's suggestion, he thought, the hunchback's, kung fu, the hunchback's kung fu is ten times greater than dad's. Even Yu Sanghai was in dread of him. In my quest to seek revenge, it would actually become possible if I have him as my teacher. But, if he, but he did not care about me at all when the Qincheng apprentice tried to kill me. As soon as he heard my real identity, he started to fight Yu Sanghai to get a hold of me. In that light, his offer to take me as his apprentice must not have come from good intentions. Mu Gaofeng saw his hesitation. You already know how good the hunchback of the North's Kung Fu skills and fame are. I've never had an apprentice before. If you have me as your teacher, I will teach you all my Kung Fu skills without any reservation. By then, not only would the chaps from Qincheng be no matches for you, but after a couple of years, it would be easy to defeat Yu Sanghai as well. Lad, why aren't you kowtowing to me to show respects to your master? Nikki, yeah, they do, like, they do sell already made boba tea. Um, I, well, it depends on if you have a boba tea shop near you. Yeah, just call them up. Chances are they'll deliver. The more anxious he sounded, the more suspicious Lin Pingjie became. If he really cared about me, why did he grab onto my wrist and pull so hard with no reservation? After Yu Sanghai found out that I was the only I was the one who had killed his son, he actually wanted me alive. Obviously, it was all because he wanted some evil resisting sword, sword art manuscript. There are many honest people with high kung fu skills in the Five Mountains Sword Alliance. If I want to if I want a good teacher, I should be looking among them. The hunchback here is too vicious. No matter how high his skills are, I'll never have him as my master. Seeing Lin Pingzhi still in hesitation, Mu Gaofeng felt his anger growing, but he still managed a smile. What? You think the hunchback's kung fu skills are no good, and I am not worthy to be your master? He asked. Lin Pingzhi noticed an angry and vicious look on Mu Gaofeng's face, fleetingly before it changed into a warm and kind smile. He knew he was in a very delicate and dangerous situation. If he refused to call him master, Mu would probably get infuriated and kill him right away. So he said, Hero Mu, your offering to take me as your apprentice is a fortune I never even dared to dream of, but I have been learning my family kung fu skills. 
but I have been learning my family kung fu skills. If I want to study from another great master, I must get permission from my father. This is not only the family rule, but also the common practice in the, in the martial world. That sounds reasonable, Mu Gaofeng nodded. But what little skills you demonstrated here today are nothing even close to being called kung fu. Your father's kung fu must, be, must also be very limited. I only had a sudden impulse today wanting to take you as my apprentice. Later, I might, not have been, I might not have the same inclination. Good opportunities don't come by easily. You seem to be a smart lad. Why are you acting so foolishly? How about this? You count out to me and call me your master first, and then I will go talk to your father. I am sure he wouldn't dare have a different opinion. Lin ping suddenly had an idea. Hiro Mu, he said. My parents were taken prisoners by the Chincheng Sword School. I don't even know if they are still alive or dead yet. I beg you, Hiromu, to get them out. By then I would be so appreciative that no matter what you do, no matter what you tell me to do, I will follow with all my heart. Mu Gaofang became livid. What? He exploded. Are you bargaining with me? Do I have to do I have to have you as my apprentice? Who do you think you are? This is just outrageous. Then he remembered that even Yu Sanghai gave in right in front of so many eyes and did not want to tear his son's killer into two. He must have had very good reasons. People like Yu Sanghai were not the type that would be that could be easily fooled. The rumor was probably true that the evil resisting sword art was truly amazing. If he could if he could take this lad as his apprentice, then sooner or later he could get his hands on that outstanding martial arts book. At that thought, he urged again. Hurry up and kowtow to me. After three kowtows, you will be my apprentice. Of course, the master will take care of the apprentice's parents. Since Yu Sanghai captured my parents, my apprentice's parents, then I go ask when I go ask him, when I go ask for them from him, it would be totally justifiable. How dare he object? Lin Pingzhi really wanted to save his parents. He thought mom and dad are prisoners of that villain. Every day would seem like a year for them. I need to get them out as soon as possible. As long as he can rescue my parents, I'd be willing to give up anything, let alone taking him as my master. So he knelt down in front of Mu Gaofeng to kowtow. Afraid that Lin Pingzhi might change his mind again, Mu Gaofeng laid his hand on Lin Pingzhi's head and pushed down. Lin Pingzhi was ready to kowtow to him, but when he felt the push from the top of his head, he was filled with repugnance and naturally straightened his neck and resisted. Hey, kowtow! Mu Gaofeng yelled angrily. He pushed down even harder. Lin Pingzhi was egotistical. When he was still the young master of the house, others always flattered him, and he never had to take any humiliation. Now, in order to rescue his parents, he had decided he had already decided to kowtow. But when Mu Gaofeng pushed on his head, it actually aroused his stubbornness. Done. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, uh. That was another long chapter, guys, but we made it. We're here. Oops. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about how to make MOBA in chat? Dun, dun, dun. MOBA tea is also known as bubble tea. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, only a few minutes to boil the boba and mix things up if you them blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so the one that I, I had today. This thing. Change the camera. This thing, yeah, this only takes five minutes. And it's pretty good. Wow, has it been two hours? All right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, I'm gonna get some tequila and then uh, we'll end really quick. I don't think this is going to taste good. 
Not gonna lie. But we shall see. I don't think you guys can see. Ugh. Uh, Amy, yes. Next week I'll try the Oreo boba. With Oreo cookies? Okay. I gotta remember to buy Oreo cookies then. I got some Hornitos tequila and this, can you see? Hope I don't make a mess again. Come on. All right, let's see. The moment of truth. Fucking nasty. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, don't do that. Tequila and milk tea don't mix. Oh, God. <laughs> this, this is honeydew. This is honeydew flavor. Thanks to, thanks to Amy. Ah. Rip. Terrible. Okay. All right, guys, I think we're good. Two hours. Is that the longest we've gone? I think so. All right, uh, see you next week. I love you. Bye.